Luminar AI is finally here. It was launched today. And in this video, I will go through some of the most interesting things in Luminar AI and show you a few things that might be good for you and you might want to use them. Hi there, my name is Peter Vosgaard and I am an Olympus visionary and a professional photographer from Helsinki, Finland. And before we start talking about Luminar AI, I have to say that this is not a sponsored video by them. I do have affiliate links in the, in the description of this video to Luminar AI. But I wanted to make this video because it's a very interesting software and I am very interested in AI when it comes to image editing. But let's first look at the interface. You start with pressing this plus button, then you can import a folder or single images. And I have a folder here which I will talk about a bit later. It's about portraits. I will show you how Luminar AI might, it not might, actually it will make your portrait editing a lot faster than, for example, in, in um, Lightroom, what I've been using so far. But first, let's talk about the, the interface a bit. Then you have the templates, which are determined by your image. The AI will interpret your image and it will uh, give you suggestions what templates you might want to use. And you can find them here. It's kind of like a carousel and there are three or four usually. And then you can click any of these and you will find five to six different templates that are, you know, kind of like a presets, but they're calling it all looks, but they call it templates in Luminar AI. And this is a good starting point. And this is something that a lot of people been misunderstanding. This is not the the end point of your image when you click one of these uh, templates. It's a, just a starting point. The first thing you can do, if you if you see that the, the whole effect is too strong, you can use this slider down here to make it a bit less, so it doesn't show that much. And then after you've chosen your base settings with the template, then go to edit and start editing your image the way you like it. And the good thing is that when you can see with these small dots, you can see what uh, effects or, or sliders have been used for that particular template. Of course, the most of these are quite familiar. They are the same in every image editing software, but this, these are more intuitive in my opinion. And there are some really smart things in, in the basic edit things, like you have the smart contrast and you have contrast for highlights, midtones and shadows separately. And that works really well because uh, usually local adjustments are a lot better than just global and AI does it very well. And, and before we get into those portraits and, and, and I will show you how I would edit or I will edit in Luminar AI, let's talk about the AI a bit more. AI is in image editing a very good thing in my opinion. That's, that's the, the whole thing. I, I see it as a lot of uh, help to us as long as we use it wisely so that we don't let AI do everything for us. That's not a good thing. We, we, we need to kind of uh, make it help us. The reason they made Luminar AI is that a lot of people have a, a hard uh, time to, find, to, to figure out how to start image editing. And that's why there are the templates. If you press the template, you have a good starting point. You have kind of an idea what to do. And of course, when you get more experienced, you will have kind of like a pre-visualization when you're making the image. Of course, that's when you're evolving. But when you're starting and when you're starting making image editing, it's, it's a lot harder to start. What does this mean or what does this mean? But with Luminar AI, it makes it so much easier. And that way, also a lot faster. But I will talk about the speed of Luminar AI in a bit. Now I'm talking, when I'm talking about speed, I'm talking about the whole process, which is kind of, kind of really cool. And, you know, the, of course, the AI is just, uh, it's quite new, actually, in, in image editing. I mean, Photoshop just launched their neural filters, I think it was called, which are in a beta state and, and you, you know, they, they work okay, but not as good, but they are not as good as Luminar AI. And there have been, of course, been some uh, critique about uh, AI that it, it will take over and we don't, you know, do our own images anymore. We just let the AI to do the image editing. Yeah, of course you can do that. And yes, it is a problem if you let you do that. But um, as a keen photographer and a good photographer, I assume that you want to edit your images yourself and tweak what the AI has to offer. 
And I think in that way, when you work it together, you have AI and then you work together with the AI, I think it's a good thing. The one thing that I would love to have is that the AI that I have in the Luminar AI is something that learns from my images. So when I have an image, it will know already what I want to do based on things that I've done in the past for the, in the images. It will learn because that's the way AI learns. It has been shown hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands, millions of images and with, with the, that are considered to be good images. And it has learned from those what are the things that people usually do with their images. And that's how the templates are made. That would be a totally cool thing if, if they would make the AI work from my images so that it will give a different starting points for every photographer because we're all different and that's that's really good. And if we all use the same templates that are already there, then we will become all the same. The images will look the same and I, that's not good because I, I really like when when we see different editing on different images. But yes, I, I'm very much for AI in image editing. And then before we get into the portraits, there is one thing that's been criticized quite a lot in different places is the catalog, that it doesn't have any search and it's not like a database like Lightroom. And that's true. Yeah, there are some limitations. We can search the images by folder, image, date and format. So there's plenty of, plenty of ways to find your images. And for example, I do a lot of uh, search by the uh, file name. I always, always give my images a file name that is descriptive. Also, the folder is descriptive. So I can find my images with the, with the folder or the name if I want to. And then, of course, sometimes I need to find it by camera or by ISO or any other parameter when I'm making my videos. But for everyday photographer, finding the image by a camera it doesn't it, I don't think it's much use and if that's something you need then use Lightroom because Luminar AI can be used as a plugin for Lightroom oh, and also it can be used as a plugin for Photoshop and there is one interesting tip about Photoshop it can also be used as a smart filter I think that is a very very good way of using Luminar as a smart filter in Photoshop but now let's talk about the portraits I have a set of portraits here that I've taken a few years ago. I chose these ones because I know I can use these. There are some client work that I cannot show. I've picked 20, 21, I think there is these images. And I've also made them favorite. A few images here are favorites that you can then sort your images by by this. So, so you can, you know, kind of like make it, put a heart on them and then you can find all the only those images that you have chosen. So there's one more way of finding your images in, in a catalog to make them make them favorites. And there are lots of lots of uh, op opportunities to edit images like there are in any other image editing software. But here we can start with the template or we can go straight to the edit and we can go straight to the portrait AI. I don't know if it's called portrait AI, but anyways, we can s click this face and start editing. And there are some tools to uh, edit different parts of the image. And what's great about this is that it's really just sliding a slider. So it's a kind of like a local adjustment. In, in Lightroom, I would need to take the brush tool and paint it here and then adjust that. And yeah, that works nice. I've done that many, many years and it works really well. But to be honest, this one works a, a lot better. And also you can uh, tweak different things and you can use templates, of course, for a starting point. But I, I tend to go straight to the edits. Enhancing the eyes because eyes are the most important thing in a portrait, at least for me, because that usually, if you have really clear, nice eyes, the portrait looks a lot more pleasing to me, at least. And a portrait like this. And then you can slide this to, to uh, clean blemishes very easily. You don't have to use clone brush if you don't want to. These these tools work really well and it's really fast. But, but when I'm saying fast is the whole process is really fast because it's easy and intuitive to, to adjust. Like the teeth whitening, you don't need to paint them white. You can, you can just make the slider and the AI will find the teeth and make them whiter. And so is with the, with the eyes also, the, the white part of the eye, which is really nice. And all those works really nice and fast. But there's one thing, it responds is a bit slow. When I'm moving the slider, it will be a bit slow. And that's, that's not a good thing. 
But then what makes it really fast is that uh, if I had done this, what I've done with this image in Lightroom, I would of course make copy all the settings to all the other images. But there's one big thing that is so much better in Luminar AI is that if I have these local adjustments, if I have brushed the eyes to be a bit brighter, I would have to do that to every image that I edit as a portrait because it doesn't understand if the face is over here and I've done this and then in the next one it's over here, the white eyes would be here, not here. But with Luminar AI it will detect the eye and if I've brightened the eyes it will find the eyes. It doesn't matter if it's over here or over here, it will do it. But Lightroom cannot do that and that is one of the biggest things, at least for me. And if you do a lot of family portraits, uh, photograph your uh, family gatherings and stuff like that, with this, it's a, like this and you're done. And that's why I think Luminar AI is superior in portraiture, at least. If you, if you have several images, I think it's a lot better than Lightroom. But of course, if you are familiar with an, an uh, 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 correcting only one image, then of course Lightroom can be really fast, no problem with that. And of course Lightroom has a better catalog and a database to find your images. Here were some, some of my thoughts of Luminar AI and why it might be very useful for you. And there are links in the description of this video if you, if you want to find out more about it and if you want to buy it, use the affiliate link which will be much appreciated. And have you already tried? Because I know a lot of people have been buying this already and have you had chance or time to look into it, what it is and how it works for you? Have you, have you checked and, and please let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts on, on, on Luminar itself and then what do you think about AI? Is that something that you, you like or not? Now here are some other videos that I made about Luminar. But hey, Thanks for watching and bye for now.